Hi everybody, I thought today I would do the Holy Son Absolute, as is Gurdjieff's way of calling God or the divine source or whatever you want to call him. So I've got some quotes here. I've been using uh, Mr. Fring's book for some quotes actually lately. So I'm going to start with In Search of the Miraculous, page 76. Further, pass into philosophical conclusions. We may say that all worlds must form some for us incomprehensible and unknown whole or one as an apple is one. This whole or one or all, with a capital A, which may be called the absolute or the independent because including everything within itself, it is not dependent upon anything, is world for all worlds. Logically, it is quite possible to think of a state of things where all forms one single whole. Such a whole will certainly be the absolute, which means the independent, because it, that is the all, is infinite and indivisible. And for many of you that study theology or have looked into all the different faiths and religions and their views of God, the divine source, the most common answer to him is, or she is, and what you want to think of God as, is indefinable because we do not actually know what the divine source or the sun absolute is. But one thing we do know is that it is the whole, it is everything, it is the all, which is what Ospensky is being passing on to us here. And I think this is what Gurdjieff's getting towards as well, you know, this, the Holy Son Absolute, which is where the divine lives, or the Holy is endlessness. The Absolute is everything. Everything comes from the divine source. And as it comes down from the divine source and goes through the different worlds and the different planets and through the cosmology, it um, you know, is getting further and further away. So that connection is weaker and weaker and weaker, which is why we have to work so hard on ourselves to rebuild that connection back to the divine source. So just continuing with research of the miraculous, page 84, where Spensky is talking all about the different worlds and the cosmos is. In world three, the absolute creates, as it were, a general plan of all the rest of the universe, which is then further developed mechanically. The will of the absolute cannot manifest itself in subsequent worlds apart from this plan. And in manifesting itself in accordance with this plan, it takes the form of mechanical laws. So, you know, the divine source is endlessness is on number one planet, where there's the fewest laws, probably, I think it's three, maybe, laws. Anyway, as the planets come out, move further and further away, they get more and more laws, which is why our planet Earth has so many laws on it for us to mingle our way through and, and uh, the more we become attuned, become whole, become connected to the divine, the less them laws will act upon us. Because hopefully we're coming out of the law of accident and going into the law of fate and being attuned to the universe. So we're not caught up in all the chaos and all the accidents that are going on throughout this realm. So in all of and everything, page 52, Gurdjieff writes, he has been taken into service on the sun absolute where our Lord, a sovereign endlessness, has the fundamental place of his dwelling. So his sovereign endlessness lives on the sun absolute. It's like the, the heaven, the holy divine house is where they're staying, he's staying, it's staying. You know, while he's uh, hiding away from time, that's eating away at the universe. And he goes on to say on page 54, when a messenger from our endlessness, a certain Ashiata Shirmash, I've done lots of shows on Ashiata Shirmash, some on my own and some with Josh, please look through the videos. Right. When a messenger from our endlessness, a certain Ashiata Shirmash, as Beelzebub had fulfilled a certain need in connection with his mission, returned once more to the Sun Absolute, he earnestly besought his endlessness to pardon the now aged Beelzebub. So good old Ashiata Shirmash, Put in a good word to you know about Beelzebub to the divine source to his endlessness you know and those that have read the book all and everything Beelzebub's tales to his grandson 
know how it all turns out. And I'm not going to do any spoilers here, but it's very important to read the book. Page 60 to 61 of All and Everything. Higher being bodies, the souls, arise in the free brain beings breeding on all the planets except those before reaching which the emanations of our most holy sun absolute owing to repeated deflections gradually lose the fullness of their strength and eventually cease entirely to contain the vivific power for coating higher being bodies so as i was saying you know the further you are away from the divine source from the sun absolute the further you are on a different planet far along in the cosmos the less you're going to get them emanations, which is why we have to work harder on ourselves so that we reach out, we reach out to the divine. And page 136 of All and Everything. This most great common cosmic trogo auto egocratic process was actualized by our endless uni being when our most great and most holy sun absolute had already existed, on which all our gracious endless creator had and still has the chief place of his existence so you know, his endlessness lives on the holy sun absolute and <laughs> you know he set the cosmic plan into motion the trogo auto ego crat and how it affects us the law of three and the law of seven we work on ourselves like i'm saying to get back in touch with his endlessness on the sun absolute we're attaining to get to the sun absolute and to do the work of that we have to do our self-remembering and our, you know, looking at ourselves and all the other exercises I've been putting out and all the other shows and the shows I've been working with, with Josh and Tony. You know, this is the work we're doing, the work with a capital W. So all and everything, page 769. One end of this line is marked as the total absence of any reason, i.e. absolute firm calm. And at the other end, there is indicated absolute reason, i.e. the reason of our incomparable creator endlessness. So the divine source, his endlessness, God, whatever you want to call him, has a reason, has a reason for everything of why he put this universe into motion. Those of you that have read all and everything know it's to do with time and time's eaten away at his, uh, his the sun absolute so he put the universe into motion created all and put it into motion to in a way distract time tick tock tick tock tick tock but i put that very simply obviously if you read the book it goes into far more detail about it and why this is going on what's happening um is time our enemy or not or is time the reason well time is the reason why this universe was put into place and such like so again it's really going back to the source and reading the books and you can't go on enough about reading all and everything. There's loads of audio versions up there. If you don't want to read the book, you know, different people have done audio versions, myself, Tony Blake, Harold Good, loads, there's loads up there. You can find them, um, you know, listen on your podcast and you're going to work, going for a job, whatever. But reading the book really will make you a difference, make a difference for you in understanding the Gurdjieff work. So back to views um, from the real world, page 66 and 67. Science cannot look further, but listen, but oh, let me start that again. Science cannot look further, but philosophical thought will see the ultimate principle lying beyond all worlds, that is the absolute known in Hindu terminology as Brahman. So you can find all these ideas in all well, these theories, these truths in all the religions but they just come under different names and um you know as you look into them you'll see connections to everything if there's an underlying ultimate ancient wisdom truth to everything that's in all religions and cultures and obviously over the centuries and the years religions have been changed by various people <laughs> but the underlying truth and the ancient truths always go back to the source the beginnings normally have the truth in them and what's being put forward these days are different people's theories of things and ideas which is why i try not to speculate too much on what i think is going on in all and everything or in gurdjieff writings or in spensky's i like to try and read the quotes and okay then i'll ponder a little bit on it but if i give you the direct quotes that will hopefully 
encourage you to go and read the books. And continuing views from the real world, the outer circle designates the philosophical principle of all things, the absolute. So you've got the inner circle, the outer circle, the outer circle is the exoteric, the inner circle is the esoteric. We're trying to come out of the exoteric to go into the, come out of the exoteric to go into the esoteric. It will take us on to the like a dartboard, you know, that bullseye in the middle, takes us straight to the sun absolute and to his divine endlessness. So I just wanted to do a little, little bit about the law of accident, just very quickly. So from In Search of the Miraculous, page 133, the man machine is in the power of accident. We're trying to get out of the power of accident when we go into the law of fate, which is by tuning and working on ourselves. And all and everything says on page 908, it often happens that while existing together, destiny for any separate individual in the process of his personal existence turns out for him personally to be absolutely unjust. But for all the others existing together with him, there are obtained from this in the objective sense an abundance of just fruits. And that's what we're aiming to get at, our just fruits. You know, we all want rewards for putting in the work and some days we're doing the work. We might think, oh, I'm not getting any ticks for this, but you are because you're working on yourself and the more you do it, but that's rubbish what I've just said. Every time you work on yourself, you get results, always. <laughs> so with all and everlasting love to you all, Stay in tune with Gurdjieff work. Hopefully you're finding the books and other teachers are out there. I'm not a teacher myself, but you know, just passing on the knowledge or other people are writing about it. There's lots of fantastic books, lots of people bringing out new, well, not new music, but new versions of the Gurdjieff work. Um, and the Gurdjieff music, always fantastic to listen to along with reading the books. So till next time, peace and out.